Hey everyone, if you're a PreSonus Studio One user, there are some essential keyboard shortcuts that you really need to know if you wanna save time when you're recording music or if you're editing music using PreSonus Studio One. I'm not someone that likes using a lot of complex keyboard shortcuts, so everything on this list should be very basic, simple to use. Often, many times, it's just one key that you have to learn. And if you put these into practice, you're gonna find yourself having a lot more fun with PreSonus Studio One. With that being said, let's get started with the first keyboard shortcut. Our first keyboard shortcut is the play and stop function, which is controlled using the space bar. Anytime that you're recording music and you need to stop, hit the space bar, or if you're mixing and you need to audition some audio, just make sure you hit the space bar to play and then hit the space bar again to stop. Like I said, pretty easy. The next keyboard shortcut that you need to make use of is duplicate. Now duplicate is gonna work, especially if you're using loops, you wanna make something loop over and over again, just hit D on your keyboard. Now this is gonna to apply to audio regions or MIDI notes that you have selected. Make sure you select everything you want with your mouse or your trackpad. Once it's highlighted, hit the D key and it will duplicate everything for you. This is a little bit quicker than doing the copy and paste method. You can be a little bit more precise with copy and paste, but if you're doing something like drum tracks, and you need a bunch of kick drums over and over and over again, just go ahead and hit the D key on your keyboard for duplicate. This next shortcut may seem like it's kind of intuitive, but you may not use it that often. These are the arrow keys. Now with the arrow keys on your keyboard, whether you're using Mac or Windows, arrow keys are gonna help you navigate through your project. The up and down arrow keys are gonna go from track to track. So if you're going from a kick drum track over to an acoustic guitar track, use the up or down arrows to navigate through your tracks. The left and right arrow keys are gonna navigate across the project. So once you have a track selected, you can go from audio region to audio region or from MIDI note to MIDI note using the left and right arrow keys. Make use of those arrow keys, especially if you wanna save some time rather than reaching for a mouse. Probably one of the most overused keyboard functions in 2023 is the quantize key. This is simply hitting Q on your keyboard, whether you're using Windows or Mac, just hit Q for quantize. If you're not familiar with what quantize is, it's basically taking a performance, whether that's virtual instrument or even with audio tracks, and it's making them snap to the grid. So if you're trying to play something in perfect timing, the only way you're gonna get there is if you quantize your audio. Select whatever audio region that you want quantized, select all the MIDI notes that you want quantized, and just hit the Q key. What you'll see is everything will shift into place. Now, this is only gonna work if you're playing to a click track or a metronome, because it's gonna quantize based off of your preferences. You can change a lot of the quantize settings at the top of the screen on PreSonus Studio One. Just look for the big Q, it'll drop down a new menu for you. Most of the time it defaults to eighth notes or quarter notes. It will quantize those notes specific to whatever you want it to be. The next keyboard shortcut I use all of the time and it's called undo. To undo on the Windows computer, you hit Control Z, or if you're on a Mac, you can hit Command Z. You can undo any action that you've done on PreZone Studio One. If you just recorded some audio, you wanna undo the recording, just hit Command Z or Control Z to undo. If you've changed a parameter on a plugin, let's say that you went to EQ something and you added way too much high frequency content. If you wanna undo whatever move you've recently done, just undo it with Command Z or Control Z. So it doesn't just apply to regions of audio. Every single time you click something or you hit something on a keyboard, that is an opportunity for you to undo it. So you can undo literally everything that you've done on PreSonus Studio One using Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a Windows. Next up is the keyboard shortcut for mute. To mute a track, simply hit M on the keyboard. It's pretty instinctive. Just hit M to mute. Whenever you mute something, you will not be able to hear that. Now this applies especially to tracks. So make sure whatever track you're selected is the one that you want to mute. Select the track using the up or down arrows or click whatever you want to mute, hit M. The same thing applies for unmuting a track. If you're on a track that has been previously muted, you'll see that it's red for mute. If you want to unmute it, just simply hit the M key again and it will unmute. So mute, unmute, just hit M on your keyboard. The split at playhead function. 
This one may be a little bit confusing for beginners, but you'll see this on the screen. Whatever region you want to make a split, you simply need to hit Alt X if you're on a Windows or Option X if you're on a Mac. Splitting is especially useful when you've got one section of audio that you really like, but then later on there's a section that you don't like as much. We can create a split, so now you have two separate audio regions. That allows you to manipulate one of the audio regions, keep the one that you like, get rid of the one that you don't like. Using the split function, especially good when you're working with vocals, if you wanna get rid of some gaps of silence, or you wanna get rid of some breaths, familiarize yourself with split at playhead. To move the playhead around, you simply just click up in the timeline and anywhere that that vertical line is present, that will be where you're making a split. Again, split at playhead. If you're on a Windows, hit Alt X. If you're on a Mac, hit Option X. Just a few more here, create crossfade, hit the X key. This goes along with split at playhead. Whenever you make a split or you have a overlapping audio region, it's always good to put some sort of crossfade. A crossfade is gonna allow one region of audio to fade out while simultaneously fading in the audio that's coming in. Crossfades are useful for getting rid of those blips or those pops that you hear when audio just all of a sudden drops off. Always having a little milliseconds worth of a fade is gonna make your audio a lot cleaner. So familiarize yourself with the crossfade. Simply hit X on your keyboard. Next up is the solo function. To solo a track, just like we talked about with muting and unmuting, you can solo and unsolo a track hitting the S key. So whether you're on a Mac or Windows, hit the S key to solo. Solo is useful when you wanna navigate through a dense mix and you wanna to try to isolate something. So let's say you've got a kick drum that's kind of problematic, but you don't know that the kick drum is problematic until you go through and you solo each of your tracks. So if you have eight tracks of audio related to your drums, you've got kick, snare, toms, overheads, all that kind of stuff, you can go through and solo individual tracks just by hitting S. When you solo, you've isolated just that track. And that's not all. You don't have to solo just one track. You can keep adding to however many tracks you want to solo. So if you have eight tracks of audio related to your drums, you can solo the kick and the snare, leaving the toms muted just by hitting the S key on whatever tracks you want. Just make sure you unsolo them whenever you want to listen back to everything. Next up is the toggle loop function using a slash key on your keyboard that will enable and disable the loop region. When using loops, just make sure you have the loop region selected that's appropriate for what you want it to be, and then enable or disable the loop function using the slash key. The loop function is especially good when you're trying to figure out parts. If you're a guitar player, you want to figure out a part to go with the chorus. We can loop the chorus over and over again by going to the loop region, select the entire chorus, and then use that slash key to enable or disable the loop. We'll get into the loop region with another video in the future, but for now, to enable and disable the loop, make sure you know that the slash key is there. The last keyboard shortcut I have for you has to do with the metronome or the click track. You can enable or disable the metronome or click track simply by hitting the C key on your keyboard. This will effectively mute or unmute your click track. And when you're recording, oftentimes you wanna have the metronome enabled. That way everything you're doing is in time. Whenever you're listening back to the audio, especially if you have somebody that's singing and they wanna hear what they just did, make sure you know where the C key is so that you can turn off the click track. Usually we don't wanna hear the click track when we're listening back to our performance. A lot of times too with a singer, what you can do is you can have the click track enabled and then as you're sitting there on the keyboard, hit the C key whenever it's time for them to start singing so that you get them in time, then they can start singing along with the track. Whenever there's an instrumental or there's just a bunch of instruments happening, you can have the click track enabled. And then when the vocalist goes to sing, as long as they have drums or something like that to perform to, they don't really need the metronome. And that'll save you from having click bleed coming through the headphone. I hope these keyboard shortcuts are gonna be useful to you while you're navigating through PreSonus Studio One. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And for more videos just like this, specific to Studio One, hit the subscribe button and check out more videos here on the channel. With that being said, I'll see you next time. Bye.